Hey, what's going on everybody? It's KD. I got another Q&A for you. I am trying to do better. And I got a really good one here from John Pappas. John, first of all, thank you for your question because it's an awesome question that I know a lot of people are experiencing also. So by answering it, John, you and I are gonna help a ton of people as well as help you. All right, so John's question. How do I stop my puppy from biting my hand when putting on the harness for going for a walk? This German Shepherd puppy is 14 weeks old and is a good dog. All right, so super common issue is puppy biting. First thing we need to do is always remember anything we're doing with a dog, we got to follow the steps. And not just the steps in, in the actual teaching and training, but just in dog ownership. I've been saying this a lot more recently. I'll be saying it even more in the future. We got three things we got to think of in this order. Management, then relationship, then training. The reason why, we can't train until we have a relationship. The right relationship. We can't have a relationship until we have a really good management plan. What does a management plan mean? Well, when you have a puppy especially, or even a new dog who's come into you, who isn't trained, he doesn't know everything you want him to do, we can't expect him to do it. So we don't want him to get in the habit of doing bad things. Dog trainers and myself will use the phrase preventing rehearsal. We wanna prevent the dog from achieving success at doing the things we don't want them to do until we can teach them. That's what management means. So with puppies, biting, nipping, it's super common. I hear a lot of, oh, the puppy's trying to dominate you. Oh, the puppy's trying to be alpha. That is bullshit. That's not what's happening. What's happening is it's a dog. It's a puppy. Their primary way of communicating with their litter mates is their mouth. So it's very natural. Now, because it's so natural, I have a brand new puppy. What I don't want to do is, get, is think, oh, I need to punish the dog. And specifically, it would be positive punishment that people are usually thinking about, even if they don't know what that phrase is because they've never watched my content. Uh, positive punishment, the addition of a consequence to decrease the frequency of a behavior. That's what people commonly refer to as a correction. And it can be anything from going, no, to I've heard some other crazy things with puppy biting, like flicking the puppy on the nose or pinching their teeth. Or You don't need to do any of that. Instead, we can use negative punishment, which is the removal of something to make a behavior decrease in frequency. That would be the equivalent of your kid back talks you so you take away the Xbox. You're removing something desired. In this case, we have to look at what's happening. What does the puppy want? Now, John, you're putting a harness on probably before you go to take the puppy outside, I'm guessing, right? So the puppy has already associated that harness with really cool stuff like going outside. That's why the puppy's getting excited and biting all over your hands because they're just, they, they can't think, they don't have the impulse control yet, which is what we're gonna teach them. The way we're gonna do that is, first, only do this when you know you have the time. That's the management part. So when I go to put the harness on the puppy, if the puppy starts biting my hand, I'm going to remove the harness. I'm gonna pick it up and stand and just ignore him until he settles down. The minute he settles down, I slowly go back to put it on again. If he starts being a jerk, bottom line is what you're telling that puppy is, I'm not putting this harness on while you're doing this behavior that I don't want you to do. Eventually the puppy realizes through your consistency and your discipline of applying this concept, the puppy learns I have to be cool to get the harness on to go outside. See, reinforcement doesn't always have to be a cookie or a treat. When you look at the definition of what is a reinforcer, it doesn't say cookie, treat. It's anything that the subject, in this case, the puppy, anything they find reinforcing in that situation. And in that situation, the puppy doesn't want a treat. The puppy wants to go outside and have a good time. So you're using putting the harness on and going outside as the reinforcement for what behavior? Ask yourself this. What behavior is it that you want from the dog? You can't say stop biting because that's stopping something. The desired behavior, what do you want the puppy to do is be cool. That subtle change in how we look at it has a dramatic effect on the training and what we're teaching. 
So what we want to happen is the puppy to be cool. The way we're gonna reinforce that puppy being cool is by putting the harness on and taking them outside. So to review, puppy does what we don't want him to do, bite, 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 bite. We take away what it wants, which is the tool that gives them access to the outdoors. The minute they're cool, harness goes on. And you know, as I'm talking about this, I'm thinking potential things that could happen. One thing that could happen is the puppy might be cool for a second as you start getting the harness on and then halfway three bites you. That's okay, you don't have to take the harness completely off. You can just stop for a second. You can pause in completing this activity. And then when the puppy calms down, reach down slowly, start putting it on again and try to, you know, don't be spazzy. We don't want to elevate the already aroused and excited puppy. We just want to be calm and cool. Do this in utter silence. All this is going to do is confuse the puppy or even worse, teach them to ignore what you're saying because they're not listening to you anyway. Let your actions speak for you. It's way more powerful. Think about it. If you have a question, put it in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe here. Click the link to my website, register for my blog, because anytime I do a video, it gets sent out to all my subscribers and you get a free copy of my book, Operation Dog. If you like my really cool shirt, here's how you get it. You go to warriordogfoundation.org, an absolutely amazing organization that helps dogs that have come home from combat or police dogs that can't function anymore. They need to be retired. And previously, we don't know what would happen to them. It wasn't always good things. This organization is the only charity I've ever supported because I know they do amazing things for amazing dogs, providing them with the retirement and the life they need. So go to their site. I'll put a link in below. Buy some cool support gear because every penny is going to go to help some dogs that need it. When you're thinking about your dog, when you're thinking about training, when you're thinking about teaching them, when you go on the internet and watch videos like this, remember the first thing you have to do is drop your ego before you pick up that leash. Send me your question, guys. See ya.